I'll start off with a few disclaimers right off the bat. This is Marty Meisner's trial. I had nothing to do with the trial. Marty couldn't make it to the AASV this year. That's how come I'm, I'm on here. So my name actually should be in parentheses or something. <laughs> Second disclaimer, this is a practitioner trial. So unlike the science and other stuff, this is Marty's practitioner trial. Third disclaimer, Marty had a vested interest in this trial. Not only was he trying to find out what was the best answer for his producers, for his clients, he was the owner or part owner of the pigs. So he had a real vested interest in this trial and subsequent production for the pigs that he managed to own. Purpose. It's a field trial to evaluate the efficacy of Ingle, Inglevac Circoflex and Inglevac Microflex mixture versus Circumvent and Respiture 1. And this is a total commercial operation. The background, it's a commercial Canadian production system, 1,500 sows, and the herd weans about 600 pigs a week. There's a PERS field strain that floats in and out from time to time, and there's a vaccine-like strain also that meanders and wanders in and out. It's a side-by-side -side field practitioner trial. He had two groups. Group one, 532 pigs, three weeks of age. They were weaned, vaccinated with two mils of Inglevac, that should be one mil of Inglevac, Circoflex, sorry, two mils of Inglevac, one of Circoflex, one of Microflex, so that's a full dose. And he had then group two, 532 pigs, three weeks of age, and they were vaccinated with one mil of Circumvent and one mil of Respiture 1. Repeated three weeks later, the same thing. These are half doses given twice, and the reason that was done was that this is a very common way of vaccinating pigs with circumvent and respiratory in Ontario and also in other parts of Canada. The protocol, pigs fill the finishing barn over a two-week period. It's actually a wean to finish barn. The finishing barn is split down the middle. Group one pigs were on one side of the barn, group two pigs on the other side of the barn. Measurements, average daily gain, total weight, feed conversion, mortality, and they also look, had access to carcass grading. At this point, these are the results. Marty then gave me the results, and I, well, let me rephrase that. I got the results, and then I handed it to somebody who can do statistics. <laughs> and unfortunately, the, the she told me that the way the trial was set up, she really couldn't run accurate, reliable statistics with the exception of the mortality, but I'll come to that. So, but what did turn out was numerical differences between the circumvent respiratory group and the Inglevac circumflex microflex group. And you can see the differences here. Uh, the weights out, 133, 0.2 kilos versus 136.6 kilos. The total gain, 106.5 versus 109.9 kilos. Average daily gain, 822.8 versus 880.5. Feed conversion, there was an advantage again for the Circoflex Microflex group, 2.742 versus 2.658. Days to market, several days to market shorter, 129.5 versus 124.8. The grading was a bit in favor of circumvent respiratory. Mortality, tremendous difference in mortality, 8.46 versus 2.63 for Circoflex Microflex. That was one at least that the statisticians could say there was statistical significance even how the, based on how the trial was set up. And, well, we are in a dung market, so 
they lost less money. <laughs> they lost less money with the Circoflex Microflex than with the Circumvent Respisure. Added in the vaccine costs and it ended up being a $6.38 advantage for Circoflex Microflex versus the Circumvent Respisure. Conclusions? Circoflex Microflex had a 57.7 gram average daily gain advantage over Circumvent Respisure. The total weight of 3.4 kilos more for Circoflex Microflex. 4.7 days to market faster for Circoflex Microflex with a 5.83% lower mortality and $7.15 less loss for each pig sold. An overall net advantage of $6.38 for the Ingovac, Circoflex, Microflex vaccinated group.